Okay. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is uh, Giacomo Medda and I'm a PhD student at the University of Calder. And I will be the presenter of a work where our team is also composed by Gianni Feno, Mirko Marras and uh, Giacomo Meloni. Our work focuses on fairness in speaker cognition, but uh, in speaker cognition is not an important topic it's the, um, and, um, yet, and in machine learning there are several publications that study Different, mitig different mitigation approaches to mitigate unfairness and also some metrics to evaluate the fairness and also definition to understand what is considered fair and what is considered unfair. In speaker recognition, the, the literature is still limited and most of the literature it focuses only on improving the general accuracy of the systems, while fairness is, is not considered in many publications, even if mistreatment of demographic groups has already been proved. Improving fairness speaker recognition is one of the few works that evaluate fairness in speaker recognition, even if they consider did not consider fairness criteria that already has uh, been established in machine learning in other works, and they try to evaluate the fairness improvement of a balanced string set over an unbalanced one. Our contribution are the fairness assessment of free deep neural networks using free state of the art fairness definition to evaluate the fairness and we study different balance settings of the dataset. In addition, we also study the trade-off among fairness, security, and usability across the recognition threshold used to evaluate the, the systems. Now we start from the fairness framework, in particular from the dataset used in our experiments. The dataset is called Fair Voice and is based on Mozilla Common Voice, which is a project on Mozilla where anyone can upload the recording of his own voice and to create an open source database to help the research into speech and speaker recognition. In particular, Fair Voice contains four languages, which, is our, which are English, which is a mix of British English and other type of English from different nationalities, Spanish, German and French. And each user in this dataset is characterized by sensitive information like gender, which is in a binary form, and age, which has been binarized in our experiments, taking 40 as a limiter age, so having four, over 40 and under 40 users, because it was the best value to better distribute the, the users in terms of age. And for our experiments, we only consider English because it's the one that counts more users than the other languages, and we have a total of 6,000 users for our experiments. In particular, the Fair Voice does not contain only the data set, but also ready-to-use training and testing sets, which are the training we have, the balanced user balance train, we will call train UB, the unbalanced train that we'll call train MB, and we have then age balance test that we'll call intra-age test and will be only used to evaluate the fairness between age groups. The gender balance test will be used only to train, to, to evaluate gender groups, and it will, we will call it as intra-gender test. In particular, the structure of the stat is the same of voxel lab testing stats. So we have evolution pairs where we have a fixed number of pairs between utterances of the same user, and then the same number of utterances between uh, of utterances of this the same user and an utterance of, this, of another user, where the, this another user is chosen based on the belonging to an, the same age group of the first user for intra-age test or the same gender group for intra-gender test. And as you can see from the pie chart, the, the, the testing sets are balanced by every the four demographic groups that we've seen. And the other users not used for, training set, for testing sets are then gathered to create the training sets where we have MB, which is highly unbalanced, and train UB, the user unbalanced, so each demographic group has the same number of users. The fairness definition that we use to evaluate our, um, our, our systems are demographic parity, which states that the likelihood of a positive outcome should be the same across demographic groups. Equal opportunity states that the probability of a speaker being correctly verified should be equal. And equalized dots states that not only the probability of a speaker being correctly verified, but also the probability of being incorrectly verified should be equal across demographic groups. First, we'll, call, we'll talk about demographic parity, but for just to mention, for every first definition, since they are only definition, we need to transform it as metric. So we take the disparity of the value of each demographic group. So we take the absolute value of the difference of 
For example, for demographic parity, in this toy example, we have two first positive outcomes for the first group A equals zero and uh, three fifths of, for the second group A equal one for a total value of 0 0.06 at a fixed threshold tau because we need to consider a threshold considered for evaluation. Equal opportunity can be represented as the disparity of true positive rates of each, of each group. So for the first group, we see for equal A equals zero, we have one half for the first group and two thirds for the second group for a total value of 0 to 16 for equal opportunity at a fixed threshold tau. Equalized odds not consider only the disparity of true positive rates, but also the disparity of false positive rate. So we can see that we, the first group has a false positive rate of 1 and the second one half. So a total value of 0 0.5 and both the conditions need to be uh, guaranteed to and, and need to be satisfied to have the equalized odds satisfied. The models that we use in our experiments are ResNet 54, which is similar to our standard multi-layer convolutional network, and takes spectrogram as inputs, and is composed of 34 residual layers. ResNet 50 has the same structure as ResNet 34, but is composed of 50 residual layers, and then we have X-Factor, which is a time delay neural network that takes 24 dimensional filter banks as input. Now we see the performance of our models where uh, in terms of equal rate, in terms of the uh, false rejection rate at the 41% threshold. In particular, we can see from the last two rows, which consider the user balance training set, that the values are better than the not balance. In particular, for ResNet 34, we see that in intra-age tests, the, the performance are better uh, for ResNet 34. For ResNet 50, intra-gender tests will report better values. While for X factor, we see that there is not much difference from not balance and balanced training set, and they, they, they remain equal for both experiments. Now we see the fairness assessment of the three deep neural networks by answering to this question how fair speaking recognition models are under different training data balancing and fairness metrics. To understand the, this point, we show these figures where lower values are fairer values. In this particular case, we see the results for at the equal rate threshold for gender groups. So we use only intragender tests in this case. We can see for ResNet 34 and X Factor that there has been a mitigation by balanced data training set, as you can see from NB to UB. And in particular, it has been done for all the free fairness definition. For ResNet 50, uh, ResNet 50 is the one that reports the best value, so the fairest values, because they are the lowest. But in demographic parity, in the, in the unbalanced training set, it was already fair, we can see. And so the balancing worsened the results and did not improve uh, as expected. For, for the threshold, the equal array threshold and age groups, we can see that for demographic parity, there are already fair results. They are really, really low. And the balancing strategy could worsen the results as seen from ResNet 34 and X Factor, while ResNet 50, as we can see, show uh, quite a perfect result of fairness. For equal opportunity, we don't have we do not have really big changes of unfairness, except for ResNet 34, which shows a good mitigation, and is the only model the only show the the shows mitigation also for equalized odds, as we can see. While the other two models. Uh, uh, shows or similar values of unfairness or worse uh, unfairness, expect, uh, especially for the disparity of false positive rate in ResNet 50. So it means that the, um, the disparity between over 40 and the 40 user is higher when the balance train, when training set is balanced. For the threshold, the for 1% threshold, we see that for gender, the, um, you see also the other the charts, the mitigation is higher compared to the age groups. First, for ResNet 50, we see, uh, again, the best results uh, among the, all the three models, especially for the, two, uh, the first two definitions. And ResNet 34 shows the best mitigation in all experiments by reducing the unfairness quite by a half. And also x factor for equal opportunity is already good. Uh, for equalized odds, uh, the, there are not improvements in terms of disparity of false positive rate for the ResNets, while X Factor is the only one that shows improvement also in this type of furnace definition. Now we see for the, the same threshold the age groups, and we can see that the mitigation is lower compared to age gender groups since the bars are similar for both not balanced and balanced training set. In particular, ResNet 44 and X Factor show good mitigation for the first two definitions. Thank you. 
while uh, ResNet 50 surprisingly is the is the worst in, in, in this type of in type of step of experiment for all the three definitions. And in results, we see that every uh, every model show a worse result a worse result for the disparity of false positive rate. So at the end, we can say that ResNet 34 is the one that is being influenced the most by the balance strategy for both age and gender groups. So it uh, is suitable for both tasks. Even if uh, in demographic parity, it now behave well for age groups. ResNet 50 is the uh, reported the lowest value of unfairness for gender groups, while for age groups uh, is uh, in general worse in the results when the training set was balanced. And X vector has been influencing most of the experiments except for age groups at equal error rate. Now we see the recognition threshold impact. So analyzing the trade-off among fairness, security, and usability across the recognition threshold. So answering to this question, what impact does the recognition threshold have on the trade-off among fairness, security, and usability? In these figures, we can see from the for, with the blue line the false assessment rate, so we, which is the security of the system. In green, the false rejection rate, which is the usability of the system. The fuchsia line is the fairness, the fairness metric value, and in particular for equalized odds, there is also the cyan line, which uh, which means that uh, which represents the uh, disparity of false positive rate, while the fuchsia the disparity of true positive rate. In particular, for for all the experiments, we will see this tendency of uh, uh, incre increment of the unfairness when the security increases, as you can see. In particular, for the 34, the peaks are a uh, threshold near the 41%, also for both for age and gender test. While for gender groups, the, the two definition, we see uh, the peaks near equal rate, a threshold lower the equal rate. ResNet 50 shows higher peaks near the 41% for each groups, while for demographic parity, we see has for the, the first rigid question quite an optimal fairness at the equal rate. For gender groups, is the only one that shows good results at the equal rate for gender groups and showing again some peaks a threshold lower than equal rate. X vector is the one that show the highest peaks for age groups, uh, a threshold the, near the 41%. And a good result also here, like uh, ResNet 50, and for demographic parity at equal rate. While for gender tests, uh, we see that is the one that is the most unstable, following the tendency of more security, more fairness. In particular, with this local minima and maxima near the 41%, and showing the peaks of gender unfairness at near the equal rate. So at the end, we have seen that for gender groups. We have the, um, the unfairness is higher when, thank you, the higher, the, uh, the unfairness is higher uh, near the equal rate, while is uh, decreases when we go towards 41%. Um, instead, for age groups, we see the highest peaks near 41% and the, the better values of fairness near equal rate. So in general, we've seen that the disparity, so the unfairness is, uh, is always uh, uh, reported near 4% or equal rate thresholds. In conclusion, we can say that balancing the training set led to, binary training and also the training sets led to better mitigation results between gender groups if we compare the results to age groups. And the models tend to increase the disparity between males and females, a threshold near the equal rate while uh, it is increased the disparity a threshold near 41% between over 40 and under 40 users. And ResNet 34 is the one that's been influenced the most, it is the most stable one across the recognition threshold. So ResNet 34 is the most, uh, mm, we say, suitable for age and gender fairness uh, uh, targets. ResNet 50 is the most, is the one that is the fairest one among the three models for gender groups. So it's suitable for this type of targets. And X vector has been influenced in most of the experiments, but it is also the most unstable across the recognition threshold. Future works will consider other approaches to mitigate unfairness, like in processing uh, techniques, uh, or and also multi-class sensitive attributes. So without binarize the attributes, uh, consider age groups uh, for all all, all, the, all the distributions. Thanks for your attention. Thank you for the talk. Uh, we have time for a couple of questions. Please here for because of the camera.
Thank you for the talk. Let me be a devil advocate uh, and tell you that uh, life are unfair. So when you're trying to be fair, when you're take, uh, take, talking about gender, you will be unfair about age. You'll try to be fair about age. You will be unfair about demographics. And what is more important, demographics, age, gender, why 40 uh, age, why not social conditions? So how you measure not uh, subjective fairness, but objective of all kinds, what is more important? Thank you for the question. Uh, it's an important question because in machine learning, there are different ways to manage the unfairness of the system. One is called individual fairness, and there are two types of considering what is fair as unfair. One is uh, that similar users should be treated equally. Another one is uh, if we have, we are all users, so it doesn't change if I'm a, if I'm a female, male over 40. So the, the results will be to have a perfect balance of performance. So having like equal rate, uh, equal for every user, which is really hard and a utopic, uh, utopic target. But in these cases where we use sensitive information, it could be important in some mm, in some condition. Like if we think about recruiting in LinkedIn, we have many different users, and could be maybe mm, we have ten users that could be um, recommended to recruit, and we need the diversity in this task because if we have all males in, in the part, it's really unfair. So we need to know in some situation who is a male or is a female. Even if it could be better to have equal uh, equal management of every user without knowing is sensitive information, so it is treated like that. In this case, it's very important to know the demographic information of each user. Okay, we have uh, one more questions in the virtual room. Uh, did you experiment with different training rounds for the same conditions? Uh, how are you sure that the observation, uh, observations uh, across uh, different model types uh, is not just because of the random initialization or slightly different training parameters? We need not consider a uh, different type of training, at least if we think about uh, the balancing of the strategy. So it could be, we could use also other type of balancing, maybe different type, not perfect balance or the type of initialization of the models. But in general, another future work that we will want to, to do is also consider the other languages of the data set. So if we had these results for English and we see the same results for other languages, it could be a problem or maybe yes for the language, but if we see a good results, it will mean that the, the strategy could help in some cases, in some situation. So the balance strategy just a pre-processing uh, technique, but it could be helpful also in, in this situation. I will confirm that this, uh, this type of technique could work. Okay, more questions? Yeah. Just be quick, one minute. Okay. Thanks for the talk. Um, did you consider using a data set like VoxCelep where you could derive other like metadata from? Because I mean, those are um, celebrities where you could look at ethics or other stuff and, and, and maybe have more than these few classes that you used there? We considered it, but uh, we did not finish the experiments to, to add in, uh, in this type of uh, okay. uh, in this conference. We already tried to also to find other data set because one of, of the reviewer of Interspeech also tried to uh, suggest other data set like the one of NIST, but they are not accessible or other data sets are too little if we think about this. But in, in the future, we consider also other languages because Common Voice is uh, gradually increasing the number of users and overall languages. For example, Italian is uh, in the last update uh, became a, a data set that could be, use, um, could be good to use in the test. So also trying other languages could be helpful um, instead of trying to find also other sources of data set. Um, uh, Voxalab is also considered and uh, we will probably insert in, uh, other, in other papers and other works. Thank okay, you. thank you. 
Uh, okay, let's uh, thank the speaker again. Thank you.